Wilson Morales talking to Max regarding season two of Fire Country. How's it going? It's going good. It's going good. Thank you. Excited. Hey, you know what? You left one show to start off another one. Success is here. You know, wh what are we getting from Bodie this season? <laughs> he can't always stay in prison. <laughs> he can't always stay in prison. And, you know, I'm also, I'm never a fan of doing the thing where you keep trying to trick the audience with the same trick all the time of like, you're there and you're back, you're there and you're back, you're there and you're back. So no, certainly we're going to continue to progress the storyline and um, he's going to evolve a lot as a character. Uh, you know, obviously we're, as you see sort of in these teasers and in the first episode, people will see that he starts off in a, like a really different place. I mean, he's physically back in prison. We see that. And uh, so you get to see a different side of him, like, you know, a little glimpse of what, what that, you know, pre showing up to three rock and season one Bodhi looks like, you know, that, uh, that survival mode that he has in there and sort of that darkness that takes over a little bit. Um, so there's definitely, there's a lot of growth for his character. There's a lot of people coming into his life and into his world. And, um, and I think, you know, what's also really exciting is just seeing some different dynamics between Bodhi and other characters that we already know on the show that we haven't explored before. When you first started a show as one of the creators, had, did you map out how far you think the characters can go or did you play it by ear until you just got that early renewal? No, I, so I'd, I'd mapped out like two seasons worth originally. Um, but you know, when you're doing 22 episodes and you have, obviously we have a lot of voices in the room and um, you know, so there's a lot of really kind of great stuff that comes along and then, you know, sometimes there's times where stuff comes back around that's in the original iteration and you're like, oh yeah, okay. Well, yeah, I guess we can use that now instead of, you know, where I was thinking about using it before. Um, but I think it's fun. It's like, you know, I, I, I had that sort of two year idea. Um, but I think what's also really exciting is just getting to hear those different voices come in and, and, you know, sometimes it, it, it changes for something more dynamic or more exciting that you didn't think of. And, and just watching the characters kind of evolve, you know, and I think it's it's what's kind of fun is I think there's a way to there's a way to sort of have these ideas for the long game, but then inevitably you see how different actors play off each other. You see how different characters, you know, end up coming off on screen, you know, in their relationship, and you kind of go, oh well, this thing is really working. We like this, and so all of a sudden you kind of start going down that path for a while. Um, and that part of it is is fun because it's kind of like life, you know, it's like you kind of have this big plan when you're young and you you think you know where you're going and you have these dreams of doing this thing, but sometimes life takes you other ways and you just sort of follow that journey. You know, this story, you know, is true stuff. You know, there are people that are in prison that do these things. You know, you, you didn't just make this stuff up. How much more of awareness and appreciation do you have for the guys that do this, having now played this role and it's not just a job? Yeah, I mean, you know, honestly, like I've always had a, a, a tremendous amount of appreciation um, and awareness for for a lot of these people in general. You know, I have a lot of friends that do these jobs, um, like family members through marriage who who actually are CEOs at these con camps and um, and people who lead um, captains who lead crews. Um, and so I've heard so many of these stories and and I've also I, I know a few different uh, guys who were former inmate firefighters who have recently paroled and, you know, and so getting to hear all the stories and like, frankly, like, I think obviously the show is really about, you know, family and redemption. And, um, but I can tell you like some of the stories that I've heard are, um, are like really kind of, you know, they're, they're dark because you, you hear about the, the struggles that people go through and had to go through before they might've gotten to a fire camp. But then you hear these really incredible, um, just like how how this place turned people's lives around and how it gave them opportunities that they didn't have. And, you know, like, and even things as simple as, you know, uh, 30 year old grown, you know, man walking up to a CEO and saying, thank you. And, you know, and saying, thanks for what? And he's saying, this is the first job I've ever had. But like really mean it and you kind of you hear that and you go like wow like you know i think a lot of people sort of see it from an outside perspective and see it as oh it, it saves the state money or oh you know um this is a dangerous job 
But I think the reality is if you talk to a lot of these people, they they will tell you this is the best job you could have when you're incarcerated. You could be scrubbing a toilet somewhere and you get to be outside and you really get to have this sense of purpose and a team to really rally around and feel like you're like you you have like this family all of a sudden. So really and the majority of the stories I've heard are are uh are are positive as far as uh -huh. you know reason why it's good a good thing. You always seem to be in shape. Do you need to be in shape for this role? <laughs> you know, working out, you know, you gotta carry some logs, you, you know, you you gotta do all this. <laughs> you do. And, you it's, know, firefighters in general have to be in shape. Yeah, it's a physical thing. Well, I think like any time where you're in a job where potentially life is at stake, you know, your own and others as well. Um, I feel like the last thing that you can have hindering you in any way would be the physical. I think that you, you know, you have to be able to perform in any situation, in any scenario. And I think that, that that's the last thing that I know I certainly would want to worry about when I'm trying to save somebody's life is being tired. You know, I know that the human body will push through a lot of things in those in those adrenaline filled moments far beyond what people think they're capable of certainly um but yeah i mean i i think as far as from the acting standpoint it helps me not be tired as an actor max on set and be able to just to keep going and keep trucking and um you know we shoot at a fast pace and so i think that that's it's super beneficial we were not you know shooting a a, a show like a medical show or something on a stage every day we're out there in the elements and um yeah, I feel like, uh, you know, um, sharp, sharpen the body, sharpen the mind and, you know, always be ready. You know, I've watched your career for a long time. You know, obviously you've, you've been working steadily for a period of time. And now, you know, you, you have multiple roles on this show. Uh, and I always say talent can never stop learning. How much are you still learning? Not only as a creator, producer, but as an actor, as you continue to do this. Yeah, I'm learning all the time. And that's honestly... I think that's the reason why I still love doing it so much. I feel like, uh, you know, at any point that I do anything where I feel like it's becoming too routine or, um, you know, it, it, it's hard. It's hard to get excited. And I think now, you know, like acting, I've learned so much and I continue to learn so much from people all the time. Um, you know, I, I was always like an inquisitive kid on set and, asking questions about directing and cameras and this and that. And I felt like I took to that rather easily. Like I just understood it. I understood that process and I could see the cuts in my head. Um, but I think the biggest one for me has just been from like a, a, a producing and higher level standpoint, certainly like, you know, I'm involved in way more conversations than I ever was and, <laughs> you know, realize how much goes into you know, making the sausage at the end of the day, there's like so many ingredients that I didn't even know were in it that now I have to, you know, be a part of and which is good. So that's, that's part of the whole bigger process as from a, a high level standpoint that I'm learning. And um, I feel like it will only make me better in the long run because I now have a deeper understanding for so many different parts of the industry and how it works. You know, the thing I was talking to Jordan about this, I said, you know, now that we're in season two, people can get comfortable and watch the show. Sometimes lately, you know, shows are getting canceled after one season that, you know, you, you hate to put some emotional investment in these shows. But when they, you hear their season's coming back for season two, now people can play catch up and get invested in these characters uh, because now they say, OK, there's a future going here. At least now I'm not I don't want to get invested for 12 episodes and then that's it. It's like, what am I going to It's like the Truman Show. What are we going to do once the show gets canceled? Exactly. You know? <laughs> We're here now. What do you, you know, and there's a glut, you know, besides cable and, you know, network, you, you got streaming. There's a glut of programs out there. What's going to get people to start watching Fire Country now if they haven't been calling up, catching up already? Um, I think like we've done a good job. You know, CBS has done a great job of just like promoting the show and and and, and generating awareness. And I think that it's a show that, you know, has also had a decent amount of word of mouth and I think that's one thing that you've seen like even with like suits recently I'm like all of a sudden everybody I'm like I'm like this show's been around forever but you realize how you know people talk about a show and they like it and I think especially in a show like this that has so many different um 
it has so many different pieces. Like it has, it has so many different parts to it that appeal to so many different people. It, it, there's a really, I think, broad audience that likes the show because it touches on a lot of things. Um, and I think at the end of the day, it has a lot of uh, sort of elements at its core that are are really relatable and human and grounded and real. And I think that's something that, you know, people want to find that person that they can relate to on a show or find that person that they can um, get behind and want to root for. And I think there's a lot, we just we, we do a really good job about balancing that. And so I think when people give it a chance, you know, if they haven't watched it for the first time and they see it and they go like, oh, whoa, this is cool. Like the action is really cool. Or, you know, I love these storylines or I love this drama and the soap, like all these different beats or the family element. Um, I think that, that, that folks uh, so far that I've spoken with have been, um, if they weren't aware, they've been like really pleasantly surprised. And I've, you know, heard of other people being like, oh, I, I just watched the first episode and then I watched 10 because I was like, oh my gosh, it's like a, it's on network, but it's like really bingey show. We, you have a lot of card turns and things that are happening and we leave off in these cliffhangers and I'm a sucker for cliffhangers. So it's like, I'm one of those guys that if I watch an episode and I get to the end of one and there's like something that I'm like, well, I got to see what happens in next week now, you know, and it's not completely finished. Um, then it's like, I'll stay up way past whatever time I should be going to bed just to you know, and then you, in the, uh, the next one comes on and they do a really good job now too of, of uh, like five seconds later, the next one starts. So you might be thinking you're getting up to go to bed and oh, it's coming on now again. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you've watched like six. Um, so yeah, I and think, uh, yeah. I, you know, speaking of cliffhangers, he didn't have to go out and see you like that. You know, I was like, he could have just, kept, they could have kept the character away. He got hurt. Let him go to some rehab. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, you know what? We've, we we never actually saw the funeral or the dead body. So who knows? I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to have to subscribe to those conspiracy theories. <laughs> That's right. You got to, you know, the, uh, he could be really, really going super deep undercover now. And it's a, a, a government asset. <laughs> but either way, you've got this show on right now. You know, that's why I asked if I wanted to talk to you. You know, I've been watching the show. I'm a sucker for these procedural dramas, and it's a good show. So definitely congrats on season two. Keep it going. You know, we'll see where it goes. We'll see what what happens with Bodie. From what I've seen so far, there's a lot coming for him. You know, good and bad, but mostly good. Let's yeah. say, hey, let's and we'll talk again season three. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Thank you. There's some, yeah, there's we have some really, really exciting stuff for uh the end of the season. There's some some heavy cliffhangers and good, in a good way um, that I don't think people will be left like, oh no, like, how would you leave me like that? But I think people are going to be left feeling like, I have to know how this is going to, you know, what this is going to become or what this is going to turn into or whatever. So I'm, the I'm excited, of, if I'm the excited as a fan. Show, the beauty about a weekly show is that you say less and we just wait and see and That's keep right. our anxiety going on. That's right. <laughs> All right, Max, take care. Right, thanks so much. I appreciate it. This is Wilson Morales from Black from TV talking to Jordan Calloway regarding season two of Fire Country. How's it going? Man, it is wonderful. It's beautiful. It's not raining today, so I'm happy. <laughs> it's always good to have a, a new season, which means job stability. Praise God. Praise God. You know? Oh, that's right. And, and so, I was, you know, the thing I always say about television shows and when you have a new season, every character is being introduced. And you, you hope that it comes back because now we can get invested. You know, yeah. to see where it goes. So, and sometimes, you know, it's a credit to the writers to say, OK, let's hold back and explore certain characters because we want to see where it goes. What are we getting from Jake this season? Well, Jake this season, you're going to see him in a lot more of a responsible role. Uh, he's captain. And you're also going to see that he is uh, somewhat of a father, too. Uh, so you're getting to see him, the juxtaposition between him being captain at 42, as well as a father at home with uh, Carr. Um, you're also getting to see how Jake is really becoming the glue for um, everyone between Bodie and Vince, Manny, Sharon, Eve, Gabriella. Um, and you're getting to see a lot of his heart. That's one of the things that's been like a resounding bell for me with Jake this season is seeing his empathy, seeing his compassion, um, seeing his kindness and his gentleness, while also seeing him step into and learn to step into a captain's role, uh, taking on the responsibility of his crew, being responsible for their lives, being having to make those tough calls. Um, 
yeah, having to make tough calls. That's one, that's one of the biggest things that you're going to be seeing this season with Jay. It's a big shift from season one where he was learning in a way he had, he had trust issues, you know, mm. obviously, you know, with the family, you know, that he thought was his family that, you know, they wouldn't tell him everything, you know, and, uh, and so now, as you mentioned, you know, time has gone by and, you know, he sees himself more in a leadership role because he's learning more on a job to, to the point where like, OK, I've been here yeah. for a minute now. Now it's yeah. my t- chance to shine. And he's got this extended family that, OK, he's got to put himself out there. You know, uh, was this something that was talked to you beforehand or something new as, you know, the new season came up? I wish it was talked to me beforehand. No, no, they uh, you know, what's great about Tia and um I mean, Joan and Tony and Max is, you know, they they took the time to develop these characters. Uh, you're meeting us six months after, so we have a bit of a time gap. Uh, but you're also getting to see Jake, like you said, from a place of uh, where he was unsure, where he didn't feel as if he had the backing. Keep in mind, the only person that he broke in, down to in, during first season was his mom when he wasn't able to give the kidney, but then too was Bodie when he felt like nobody had his back. And it's so beautiful because he is the only one that had his back in that moment. And where we find Jake right now, when season two kicks off, he's trying to rally the troops to get everybody to have Bodie's back. It seems like when everyone is counting Bodie out and everything, Jake is the one that's also like, no, 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 no. That's, that's my guy. That's my boy. We're not going, we're not going to leave him out there. You know, um, in in that in 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 seeing where Jake was before he was, you know, immature, he was much younger. He he didn't really have that ment- that mental fortitude that he's developing now because of the hardships that he's finding himself in, um, because of the role and position that he's in right now, which is ha- which has catapulted him to step into this uh area of being a of being what what it means to be a father what it means to be a real friend to be a good boyfriend um and and he's learning and taking all of this on while also trying to still maintain some sort of um glue or or uh keeping everyone together you know trying to keep everyone um close and and not have the ripples and the scat schisms that have happened from Bodhi taking the fall to really permeate throughout the rest of everyone's relationships. He's trying to bring the fold back in. Um, and he's he's getting some resistance in that. For you, when you first took on this role and you're playing the role of a firefighter, how much research did you do? It's not just more than a job because there are people who do this in real life, you know, like how much research you do, did you do with the people that really do this? You know, right. so that way you have, better, you have a better understanding of the job outside of the script. Right. No, it, that in that study, in your in my research and in my study of like the fire department, <clears throat> also how uh, Cal Fire even came about from, I believe it was back in uh, with World War II, um, but how they even came about um, talking with our uh, uh, fire technician constantly. We're, we're so lucky that our fire technician, Jeff, uh, he has allowed us to also go on ride alongs out here with the uh, Vancouver Fire Departments, um, constantly doing seminars with Jeff, who uh, he gets his uh, different captains or retired firefighters to come on. And we just go through a seminar and we just study and we learn. You have an appreciation for uh, all of these men and women and what they actually have to sacrifice. Um, I mean, being able to read clouds, uh, check the winds, um, the different, uh, it's really being aware of your surroundings is one of the things that I've really taken from my uh, classes and studies is always keeping your head on swivel, always trying to prevent hazardous, uh, it's really preventative uh, hazards from happening. Um, and, and like I said, like in this study and in understanding these guys and women and, and where they're coming from, um, it's sacrifice. The, they, they don't, they're not questioning. When that bell goes off, let's go, stop what you're doing, get after it. It's a selfless act. These first responders are selfless. That's that's the best way that I can um, explain the thing that if you're going to bring it all into one word, selflessness. Um, it's not just a job to them. And that for me, for Jake, has helped me really sink and walk into his shoes 
that this isn't just a job. No, this is my calling. This is my purpose. And for a lot of these uh, women and men, they this is their purpose. They 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 run into burning buildings without a second hesitation. Um, you have to be built different. You got to be built different in order to do something like that. You know. Did you have to prepare for this role physically? You know as well because you know we are, we see you out there and it's not all stunt doubles where you have to perform some of the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to be in some physical shape, my friend. You definitely got to be in some shape, especially when carrying those uh, those tanks, uh, the SBCA gears or is our structural gears. That's going to come into about a weight of, I mean, just the gear, uh, the tank without the air in, I believe it's around 50 uh pounds and then when you or maybe around yeah around 40 to 50 pounds i think but um when the air gets in there it's up to like 65 or 60 uh pounds and then you have your structural gear which sits about 15 pounds you know and that's that's it's a lot of weight it's a lot of work and um when we're doing extrications when we're uh carrying gear, even the combi tools those things are heavy as well so you know, we do we do our workouts. It's funny we uh, during lunch times we'll we'll work out with our grips and our uh, gaffers. Uh, we'll do some ab circuits or do some lifting as well. It's 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 beautiful what we've built here uh, here at Fire Country with our crew as well because um, we have a beautiful synergy, you know, and a, a, a lovely ecosystem that we're that we've developed where we have each other's backs. And like when we're filming out here in this. Um, Canadian tundra I mean we're all in it you know and, and and that's why me and Kevin will always yell out hey greatest job in the world because when you look around and you see your camera department pushing their cart through this mud on Duraplex and then you see like everybody we could be miserable but you know what no we got each other's back so it's it's something that you also bring in uh from that mentality of the firehouse as well you know, you've worked for over a decade, different shows, some episodic work. Damn, and, Wilson, it's been that long? Dang. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when, I say, when, when, when I'm looking at your background, it was like, he was on ER. <laughs> no, yes. yes. He was on ER. It's like, well, this guy, you know, he may seem young, but he's been in the game for a good minute. He's been you know? in the game for a good minute. And so one can never stop learning. And obviously with this show, you know, it's a main road. It's on, a, you know, obviously on the network series. And you've done that before. Uh, you could never stop learning. What are you learning from this show, skill set wise, as an actor, as mm. you continue to work? Whether it be with different directors or you know showrunner, like or even your coworkers, you know, is there anything you're picking up that helps you along? No, absolutely, Wilson. I, that's a great question, actually. Um, so, I mean, my my background is I'm second generation. Mom used to be a model and actress. She still acts. Dad, he's a cinematographer, a DP. Growing up in our household, there was no above or below the line. So I'll make that be understood real quick. Um, I have uncles and aunts that are uh, bus boys, key grips all throughout. So I say that because in my period of working, um, in and it's humble, I say this humbly, um, because it's only by the grace of God that I've had the career that I've had, um, as, as well as with hard work and dedication. Um, but I would have to say that, you know, some of the things that I've learned more so are for myself as well, uh, in my own maturation, um, learning how to work with different uh, directors, how to work with different writers. Um, one thing that I've, oh my gosh, come to really appreciate about Fire Country is that I'm working with people that are humble and do not have egos. So working with individuals that, like I said, when we're out on location, yeah, it sucks, but you know what? Tough it up and let's get it through. And yeah, we'll complain about it over a beer, whatever. But we all hunk down and get it done. Um, this is also expanded into my desire for directing where I've been able to shadow directors and watch and learn. You're absolutely right that once you get to a point where you feel like you can't learn anything, that's when your demise will begin. You know, uh, one of my favorite verses, you know, a hottie spirit, uh, pride comes before the fall, a hottie spirit before destruction. So if I ever get to a point where I'm thinking like, oh, I don't need to study or I, there's nothing else I can take from that. One, then I should either remove myself, but two, really, I should humble myself. And there's always something to learn. Um, with this, there's new skills. 
before I did uh, Black Lightning, I was learning a lot of martial arts. I was a lot of, I was doing a lot of gun activities at heavy, heavy uh, night works. With this, I'm learning a different skill set of extrication, moving with heavier equipment on, um, what it is to actually like dangers that you would see. I see things differently now just because of this show. Uh, I see hazards more efficiently. Uh, so it's, it's funny how even though I take on different roles, I can take on different, some of their different abilities, some of their different traits, some of their different things um, that make that character, which I can then apply to myself, like you like you uh, uh, surmised. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I always say, you know, there's a glut of programs on TV, you know, there's mm -hmm. a lot, you know, between now that we have network and streaming and then obviously there's films, and I think it's some for some people they want to wait to a show gets greenlit before they mm. start getting tested because you know we've seen lately where shows after one season are done, you yeah. know and you're like okay it's like it's like it's like almost like Truman Show what are we gonna do now you know yeah. what do we see next you know you it's like, that wall. so now that we're into season two what's gonna get an audience to watch you know this series you know for those who have not picked up and now that they right. know this is season two it shows a level of commitment. To not right. only the team, the cast, but to the show itself. Like, okay, right. let me let me check this out. You know, yeah. so like, wait, because you know you're on it, and other people are on it, and you know, people are always being discovered. For those who didn't see you on Black Lightning, now they'll see you here. Right, right, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, could you could, give me your question again? Could you restate? The question it? is, what's going to get people to watch Fire Country now? Got they it. haven't been caught up to it now already. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, if it's not Billy Burke or, you know, uh, Kevin Alejandro, you know, all the, you know, handsome ones that really get the women to come to our show, uh, he'll love that. Billy will love that. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I definitely is going to, I'm going to say that it is the story, obviously. Uh, Tia, Tony, uh, Joan, Max, they are adamant about wanting to tell character driven stories. Um, obviously, if you, I mean, if you look at Aristotelian's method of writing, spectacle is going to be a huge thing. I mean, you mentioned it. Um, we have, we're in a society where everything is going for one season or this, shorter episodes. Benefit of this season is that we're only doing 10 episodes. So it's, I mean, we've packed in a lot. It's, it's been long, long days, which has been great. But, um, I mean, we're talking about character growth. We're talking about uh, tragedy, heartbreak, um, pain, uh, betrayal. It's, it's, it's funny how they are able to, like, knit all of these different things in uh, into the sinews of our show um, with the foundation of redemption. That is the foundation of our show. And that's why I love our show is that we are showing incarcerated uh, prisoners uh, mm -hmm. in a better life. We're showing them another means of uh, stepping into their new selves, maturation, uh, redeeming themselves. Um, when we look at Greek heroes, right, stories that we've grown up, which have then shaped the cinema throughout the years, we have the hero's journey. This is what we get to see with our characters, not just Bodie, not just Jake, not just Gabriella, not just Vince, not just uh, Sharon. I mean, you're seeing it throughout even our guest stars where we're learning our lessons. And, and that's what I'm talking about, the details, the, you know, it's the same, the devil's in the detail, right? They are so good at, we're going to use this uh, guest star to, add, to show uh, what our main characters are dealing with, what they're struggling with. You know, and it's basically holding a mirror up to yourself, which is healthy for all of us to do. Um, I, I think what we strive for is what my screenwriting teacher uh, back in university told me. You know, you want to cause a catharsis within the audience, causing them to question, ask and better themselves uh, for the better of the, the city state or for the better of the community. And so I think. Fire Country does that with the vehicle of uh, Three Rock, that vehicle of you have uh, incarcerated individuals that are working towards uh, their freedom in that they're bettering themselves. And what's beautiful about that is that it's a real thing. This is a real thing that um, I was talking with uh, Jen, uh, Jen, one of our uh, 
PAs whose friend is works in um, the prison system. And pr like you have, uh, we're hearing that prisoners watch the show. They, they like the show. To be able to be a part of something like that, that's, that's what matters, you know? To be able to have, to say, I love doing Black Life. I loved it. Nothing ever negative about Black Life. And then to be able to have this opportunity to step into this role where it's also showing redemption and showing, hey, if you're incarcerated, you still have a chance. Here's an opportunity. I love that. I, I can go to sleep every night. I can go, you're right. Like I can say that that's what I'm a part of. That's what America even said. This was the number one best show because of that, because we're giving hope. We're reminding the people that we have struggles, that we all have shortcomings. It's, I mean, like at the end of the day, that's what fire country gives you. It shows you like, yeah, nobody's perfect. You know, forget all of this cancel culture and all of that. Yeah, nobody's perfect. You fall short, you get back up, and you try to get over it, or you try to do better. And not just on your own, but you have a surrounding community that's healthy to do that for you. Sorry, I get a little bit excited about it. <laughs> hey, that's that, that's how we can end off on a great note like that. Jordan, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Okay, Obviously, you. you know, when, when you're on a show like CBS, stability is always going to be great because right. you working keeps me working. So take care of yourselves wherever you're at. I'll see. I'll see the episodes and see where long. You know, you're the you're the brother on the show. They ain't killing you off. <laughs> they. I mean, I, I'm trying not to, man. We, we, you know, we, me and me and he, we, we are Jules. We out there. We holding it down. We holding it down. You know. So we. You know, we get that's the good thing about this show. He he's not the one BP. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, and and that's I appreciate you saying that too because, you know, that's that's just a testament to um to our writer staff that they're they're aware of that. They're trying to show, you know, um, I love the fact that, you, so, sorry, I don't know if we're going over, but my boy Ty White, he plays Cole. And like, I love the fact that we, even with uh, Ty uh, from last uh, season, season one, uh, Freddie, like we showcase black incarcerated men, but doing stuff to get better, that they are not just staying there. You will not let that be our narrative. No, you have individuals, and I love that that Max. Like I talk to him all the time. It's like, yeah, I want I want them to be there. Like, and you showcase a black man as a captain of a fire crew. You know, having to earn his way there. You know, I'm just saying. Like, I'm I'm a, I. This show gives me joy. It makes me happy to be able to say, like, yeah, my name is associated with that because Joan, Tony, Tia, uh, Christiane Reed, G JBTV, Max, they are aware and sensitive to that they showcase uh the latin american community you know um i'm happy to be able to say i'm a part of this show i really am once again congrats we'll talk down the road have yourself a great day <laughs> same to you wilson bye